such a great pleasure to see uh, the number of participants going up and up and up. Uh, we are extremely grateful and thankful to everyone who subscribed to today's webinar. We had more than 400 um, registrations, uh, so we expect around 400 people. And um, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you today. Um, today's webinar is a follow-up to open public consultation on the European Climate Pact. Uh, today we want to go in depth on the many good ideas that you have um, that you have uh, posted there, and we are happy you have you have done that because I always. Um, repeat that normally people don't want to do these, you know, 50 pages um, or 50 questions, questionnaires, but you have done it and, and we're really happy about it and it's great to, great to have you here. Uh, today I'm here, uh, so I'm Kasia, I work in a, a Director General uh, for Climate Action, um, working on the Climate Pact. Uh, I'm your host uh, for today. Um, there are two more hosts and actually an army of people to deliver this wonderful webinar that uh, we're also grateful to. Another host is Sylvia borkowska Vashak. None of Hello. it would have been possible if Sylvia wasn't around. Uh, you have probably been in touch with her or if you're a facilitator, you have been in touch with her. Thank you, Sylvia. We also have Ian Anderson. Ian, wave to the camera who will help us host this meeting. Um, we also have um, technical hosts, uh, William and Jazz. If you, guys, can you, uh, if you wave at the camera, that will be fantastic. Um, if you need something from William or Jazz, or you, if you have a technical problem, the best is to write privately to them if you can't do it, just write something in the chat because we also have a chat master, Christopher, who will be um, keeping an eye on the chat in case something is needed. We also have a great pleasure of having a visual harvester, uh, Claudio. Claudio made these wonderful graphics. Uh, as you can see, we are all carrying the climate pact. We are rising from the leaves into being. Um, and this wonderful image will, uh, will accompany us um, into the webinar. Uh, if you have questions uh, throughout the webinar, put them in the chat. We will either answer them right away or we will answer them um, at the end. Very important thing please put a number of your group in front of your name. When you were registering for the webinar, you have chosen one topic that mm -hmm. you would like to pursue, that you would like to discuss with other people, active people like you. These are these topics, if you don't remember, uh, have a look. Or rather not achieved, we can... Uh, if you are not speaking to us, try to mute yourself. I think that should be a, a default state anyway, to be muted. So, what is really important is that you rename yourself uh, as a participant of this webinar, because like that we will be able then to teleport you into the working group. So, these were the topics. If you don't know how to change your name, here's a small tutorial that I'm going to try and walk you through unless it freezes, yes, it, it, yes. So here at the bottom, you have participants. When you click on it, you will find your name on the, in the right uh, hand corner. And there, uh, and there you can see the button more, hover your mouse over that, there'll be more and there'll be rename. And when you rename yourself, put first the number of the group that you wanna be discussing, otherwise we won't be able to teleport you into the participatory part of the session. Today's agenda, Sylvia, have I forgotten something? Or that's more or less clear? So far so good. So far so good. It's, uh, you know, it's this good practice of having somebody actually really listen to you in case you've forgotten to say something important for the participants. 
Uh, today, there will be a presentation by my bosses about like, why are we here from the top level? Why are we here from the very practical level? You will hear what other respondents to the public consultation have said. Uh, we already have the first results. You will get a sneak preview of the results of the open public consultation. They are not yet published. Uh, so this is our little treat. I hope it will be interesting for you. Afterwards, we will have interactive thematic discussions around the topics that you have chosen. Afterwards, we will go back to plenary to hear everything uh, that you've discussed. And then there will be Q&A and, and the next steps. But before we do that, since we are coming from all over the, the, the Europe and, and the world, we wanted to make sure that you have really landed into this webinar. And to, for that, uh, how to do that, I will hand over to Celia. Uh, hello, everyone, again. I'm very, very happy to be here um, with everyone, especially that we are joining from so many different places across Europe and even across the world. And because we are so in so many different places, uh, probably 15 minutes ago we were doing uh, either late lunch or we were working on something completely different. Let's, let's all focus now on this virtual space that we are discussing today, the European Climate Pact. And please write in the chat, what do you expect from this webinar today? Let's focus, let's imagine uh, you received all the, all the invitations. Some of you are helping us as, as facilitators. Please contribute in the chat and tell us after reading all this, after landing virtually from so many different places across the globe, what do you expect today from this webinar? I'm very happy that, um, that people already started saying hello from so many different places. This is very nice. And now I can, I can see that uh, you come here to learn new ideas, to, to meet people also interested in, uh, in climate action, to get inspirations, to get new information about the status and about the next steps, to gain new hopes. That, that's a nice one. Um, okay, so to, to see other, what other people in different places are doing, uh, to give contribution, to learn about other sectors, what they are doing, Fantastic. It's really amazing how quickly the chat goes. <laughs> there are really 300 of, of you with us. That's amazing. Um, thank you very much for all the contributions. There is a lot of expectations. I, will, I hope that we will uh, fill them in. Uh, and uh, maybe to start feeling uh, at least some of the expectations that you are writing about, uh, we will now move towards um, towards the, the first uh, hello, the first official part of the of the webinar. Kasia, who will speak and about what? Thanks a lot, Sylvia. So first of all, I have a great pleasure to uh, tell you that we have with us our Deputy Director General, Clara de la Torre, uh, who has a couple of welcome words for us. Clara, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am, as Kasia was saying, Clara de la Torre, Deputy Director General of Climate Action of the European Commission. And I, I must say, it's a job which I'm very proud of because it's a job which puts me as a European official and a believer in the European project in the center of the political challenges, economic challenges, and social challenges that we are all addressing together. So this way, I'm extremely grateful for the around 400 of you that are here with us today and all those thousands of people that have replied to our consultation. I'm really, really grateful. Um, when our president, Mrs. von der Leyen, and uh, the executive vice president, Mr. Timmermans, asked us to, 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 to shape a pact, a pact, something where you offer something, I offer something, and we reach an agreement on doing something, when they answered to us, we said, the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that we have everyone on board. This is why it is so important that, uh, that you are here with us. Why did they have this, this, this idea? Because they saw all the movements 
of youth, but not only, also of, of workers of different, of different, um, of different uh, industrial uh, uh, settings, of the of the science, because we are very lucky to have a very strong scientific basis for our for our policy. They saw the results in some of the elections in some countries at different levels, whether local, regional, national. That this is a real issue. So they told us, please think of doing making a pact and why they call a pact because we have legislation we know that we have all our funding initiatives we know that and we are all bound by the different rules uh, regulations that goes without saying but there is something more which is dare i say even more important for for uh, for for the, the the planet and this as you can understand contrary to other things which, where one can say i do that and i propose to do that and let us go along with that here now in the pact we have to do things together uh, so we are not intending and this is why we had as Kasia was saying what an extensive consultation because we wanted to make sure that we knew what you thought what could you offer and how could we help you because our institution has different uh, mandates in in in, in our uh, in, in the constellation of European institutions but one of them is facilitating facilitating that things happen, that things that are European, things that are global like climate, happen. So we are here to make sure that we facilitate what's going to, to happen. So in that way, we link the economy, the, the politics, uh, with the everyday, the grassroots actions, which are at the heart of our undertaking. Um, the Climate Pact is and will be, I am sure, something like the the creation of the european project something continuously under construction and in which every one of us has something to do and has a responsibility so we draw our legitimacy from people from the actions and we know there are already plenty of them fortunately plenty of them at different levels individual community industrial research levels plenty of initiatives which are aimed at addressing the challenges we have what we want to do is to first to put all this to try and and for those that want to put those things together and make them um work in a syner synergetic way i know this is a buzzword used all the time but it is true when we put different parts of a puzzle together we get a picture which is totally different from the uh, from the, the the box with the different uh parts of the puzzle together. I am sure that you have heard um, us and, uh, and uh, our, our political masters to say that this deep transformation that we have to do has to be done without leaving anyone behind. Why do we say that? We say that at least for two reasons. You know that one of the strong values on which, on which the European Union is based is solidarity and prosperity. So, we can't afford leaving anyone behind. But also, allow me to say a bit selfishly, if we don't have everyone with us, we will not make it. We will not uh, win the battle against the climate change. Because ultimately what we do in our everyday life, how we behave, how we think, how we approach things, do have uh, an effect on the climate, do have an effect on how industry uh, makes the supply chain and how our politicians um, uh, govern our, our countries. Credibility, therefore, is very important and uh, you will go, you will see in the different, uh, in the different uh, parallel sessions the different aspects of this credibility, but let me emphasize one of them. It is concrete and real action beyond what is happening now we would have succeeded if we uh, in common all together we would have uh, managed to do something which we would have not done otherwise and uh, i was thinking what have you done for the climate change yourself uh, i try to remember it every day since i'm in this job not even a year but already before and i remember a little anecdote uh, i was four or five years ago trying for the first time the shared mobility systems in the city. I like the cities and I move a lot in the cities and 
I took one of them, I left it at home in the entrance and I said, I have another car. And someone replied to me, no, I said, I had two cars. I said, no, you have hundreds of cars. This is what it means addressing climate change. This is what it means making this revolution is opening possibilities uh, for doing more, but being much more friendly to our planet. So thank you very much for being there. Thank you very much for your contributions this evening, this afternoon. I'll try to stay with you for a while, but I'm sure my dear colleagues will, uh, will, um, will uh, debrief uh, myself and other colleagues not present here about how we can go forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Clara. Uh, that was very, uh, very inspiring. Um, and uh, if you have questions to Clara or now um, to our next speaker, Elena, please put them in the chat. We will answer them um, either at the end or at the end of the presentation. Uh, I would like now uh, like to ask Elena Wisner-Malinowska, my head of unit, um, for a second part uh, of the presentation for today. Elena, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I will first check the sound with you, Kasha. Is that all right? It's okay. It was a bit uh, breaking, but uh, I, I will let you know if it doesn't work. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's good now. No. Now can we you lost hear me? It. Yes, now we can hear you. Thank you. Very good. Um, I hope my uh, connection will stay um, also I'm really pleased to see the presence on, uh, on this call and on this webinar. Um, next please. So um, I'd like to present you uh, first of all what uh, will be the, the purpose of today. Uh, well, the, the purpose of today would be to again look at uh, the public consultation results and to go much deeper in detail on what you were telling us in, uh, in, in, in your contribution in your submissions and moment where we will try to co-create uh, the, um, the communication Lena, I think we lost you Yes, I think we have lost Elena for the moment. Um, Asha, if I may suggest, maybe you maybe you continue telling about this um, main point, and maybe Elena will come back. What do you say? Okay, let's do that. Uh, please check with Elena if, uh, how it's going, and um, I will I will take over here. Before I go on. We still have people who have not changed their name, which means we won't be able to uh, invite you to the breakout groups afterwards. So please do it. Um, so today, the purpose of today, uh, go in depth, uh, have a look in practice what some of the concepts that we have uh, gathered uh, through the public consultation mean. Um, as Clara said, uh, this pact cannot be a top-down exercise from Brussels. We really want to co-create it with you. We want to co-create it for today and for tomorrow. Uh, the next step tomorrow will be the communication. Communication is like an official document from the, from the commission, um, giving some details about what the climate pact should be about. But again, we cannot write it alone. This European leadership in, um, in climate action has to be connecting the, the political leaders and all the activists, the people marching the streets with Greta and the people marching the streets with the, with the yellow vests. We really need to listen to each other for the pact to, to be really useful for everybody to deliver on the ambition that we have. So we will be defining the, ele the elements and we will be also looking for su first supporters of the pact. The first kind of demonstration of, of a support uh, can already happen in autumn where we will have a launch event uh, of the pact 
Uh, but it's not just about the events, it's about the activities, uh, activities, about the initiatives, about the ones that are already ongoing, how we can support you, how we can scale up and replicate across Europe, how we can avoid that people have to learn from scratch, how can we learn from each other, and then how can we identify the gaps where the action is not yet happening and, and action is absolutely needed. So everybody has a role in the EU Climate Pact movement. This movement is already there. How can we consolidate it and, and move forward? Uh, Kasia, very yeah. good. I think we have Elena back. Uh, Great. Uh, uh, so we can move to another slide and uh, give... So I will move to the next slide. And Elena can tell us what the pact is, uh, what today the EU Climate Pact is for you, Elena. No? I'm sorry, I, I hear very uh, little. You are chopped as well. Okay. Can you go? Can we don't hear you, Elena. Can you take over the question, please, uh, Kasia? Yes, I will continue, but if, if we have you back, it would be great to hear from you as well. So, uh, what the pact is today, um, it has, the, the main elements uh, are um, talking about climate, but talking in a meaningful way. It's the conversation that matter. Uh, every, uh, every part of Europe has a different narrative about climate. I am Polish, it's a different narrative to what there may be in the, in the Netherlands. We want to really pin it down, what the climate, what the climate action, what, what climate change means to people um, everywhere. And we want to then, turn this talk into action um, and the action can be demonstrated through uh, pledges so the commitments of what I can do or what my organization can do uh, at the organization level it's both at the level of me and my employees like the European Commission for instance we we want to walk the talk and we're looking into the ways how we can talk, walk the talk as a big organization um, but also for the organizations in terms of product services, whatever it is they are doing so that they are climate neutral and green and environmentally friendly. Um, we're also looking for the first ambassadors. Um, ambassadors today for us are, are uh, people who are like great connectors, who are connectors between the policymakers and, and everybody else. It's like a two-way channel for communication. We always talk about that we listen and so on, but they would be like the embodiment of um, of, of this two-way communication. This is the current idea, but again, we are here today for you to discuss it and for you to tell us if you want to be an ambassador, what, it, what would it mean uh, for you every day? And then it's about working together. It's about online and offline spaces. Of course, nowadays, now we're going much more online uh, to, to meet, to act, um, but, you know, when we can come back offline and, and see each other, this, is, this will also be about that. And this working together is very important. Uh, as I said, it's about really uh, sharing knowledge and, and really seeing what do we already know so that we don't have to reinvent it and so that we can support whoever wants to do something around climate um, action so that we accelerate. Because if we are to su succeed, we, we all have to do something and we have to accelerate whatever it is that, that we're doing. So this is our current kind of thinking around, around the pact. I will go on. Sorry, it's just going to, yeah, yes I can. So who is the climate pact for? It's really for everyone from public uh, administrations of all levels, multipliers. Uh, by multipliers, we mean, we mean organizations who, who have access to people, citizens of Europe, that normally it's very hard for us to, to reach. I've been in f for 15 years doing something around communication in the, within the Commission for different topics, for startups, for uh, new technologies, and always there is this plea, please the, communication needs, the, the, co the Commission needs to communicate better. We know, but we cannot do it alone. We can only do it through good multipliers, organizations and people who have this reach, who can reach to the smallest uh, town and to people who normally don't follow our Twitter accounts. Uh, 
It's obviously for youth, but it's both for youth that is already active and the youth that is maybe not yet so active. Civil society, all these grassroots initiatives that are popping up uh, everywhere, let's learn from them, let's support them uh, if we can. For citizens, for individual people, the pledges are about also, you know, my pledge for instance would be, I will talk to three people about climate and see that, you know, we have a meaningful and fact-based conversation. Uh, of course, it's about education. A lot of a lot of you from the from the open open public consultation have said that education is very important for you, and and for this cause, um, the the EU doesn't have direct competence in EU in, in 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 education, so we cannot you know tomorrow change the educational programs. But there is a lot we can do, and I think we we have uh, even some colleagues from the uh, from uh, director general responsible for education who will listen and who will offer their uh, insights on, on the matter. Academia, businesses, um, big and small businesses. Um, I come from startup world and SMEs. You know, there are already companies who consider being green as their competitive advantage. At the same time, you have a lot of businesses, especially now after COVID, who are struggling and it's, it's difficult for them to, on top of everything, think about being green. But this is exactly also the, the kind of mindset we need to exercise, that thinking green and climate neutral is not on top. It's, it's if you want to do well, you need to do good. Um, and media, uh, traditional, um, modern, you name it. Okay. So, um, Kasia, if I may just say, we have... Uh, Something like maybe seven, ten minutes for the LPC results. Uh, okay, good. Do we have Elena? No. Did yes, I'm here. I'm here. Elena, I'm joined okay. by smartphone. I try yes. to do my best. You sound much better now. Um, I've gotten to the end, and now is the public consultation results. Indeed, and I will now uh, accelerate. So please pass me your belt. Um, okay. Next, please. So first of all, what the public consultation is telling us, and these are really the flash results I would like you uh, to, to, to look at, because we are so proud of getting 3,510 contributions and many things, many, many thanks uh, for, for your contributions. 80% um, out of them come from EU citizens. Um, we have a lot of young adults and the youth uh, that was active. This is absolutely excellent. This is how we like it. And of course, uh, some of countries may be overrepresented of uh, others, but this uh, comes also with the population. So we have seen big member states, Germany, France, Belgium, Italy, or Spain replying uh, quite massively. Now, um, what are the main results? Um, so, uh, what uh, information would be useful for you and organization under the European uh, Climate Pact? Uh, Kasia, yes. uh, next slide, please. Yes. So, first of all, uh, what you are telling us that the information should come from the scientists or from Europe. This is what you feel uh, would give you comfort uh, for the information. Um, what can I do? Uh, so that's a question uh, that is often uh, related and of course uh, how, uh, how Europe or how others can support me on what I wish uh, to do. Now in terms of the uh, engagement, um, uh, the uh, classical channels uh, that uh, we want to use uh, will not be surprising for you. These are social media, typically Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. And this is what uh, you will discuss very much also in group three uh, with ambassadors who should be the multipliers using social media 
for the purpose of uh, disseminating information and communicating. Uh, it's also education and training that comes very high. Uh, schools, of course, are the primary places where um, information uh, is dispatched and where people engage on many topics. And this is what you will discuss in Group 8 on climate uh, education. Um, websites, of course, uh, and uh, platforms come quite high, and this is what you may discuss in the PAX platform in Group 4 or 5 on pledges. And of course, we all want to have these nice conversations through um, conferences, workshops, etc. So how do we share um, in the best manner uh, the, uh, the knowledge and webinars and this is what you will discuss uh, in uh, group six. And now we come to how we trigger action uh, because of course uh, engaging is one part of uh, the equation but very importantly we need to take action so yes we can that's what is uh, should be the motto of the of the pact but we of course we need uh, some support uh, and uh, this support will be discussed in uh, group seven you have replied to us that uh, you would need uh, support uh, in terms of information or information about funding but let's see uh, what comes out from your um, your uh, conversations. Now coming to pledges, um, it is very interesting what you are telling us in the public consultation because most of you are saying that you want to lead by example. 63% where is the recognition is 24%. Uh, so we see you as uh, leaders uh, who want to be part of the community and, of course, share the experience. Main topics didn't surprise us so much because, of course, consumption often comes uh, very uh, strongly um, at the forefront. Um, food choices, um, mobility, how do I go to work, how do I uh, go home if I'm in Brussels and my parents are in uh, Bratislava. And of course, the targeted support that, uh, you know, what do I need to, to do all that, uh, which is of, often about awareness raising, uh, advice, uh, possible funding in certain areas. So how and what in practice this would mean. So this is all what we uh, will be debating. Now, um, next please, um, this is about how we organize the progress because it's all fine, we commit uh, to a lot of pledges, but how do we actually progress on them and what can we use? And here uh, it is uh, clear that uh, it needs to be very much tailored to the participants. You know, if I'm an individual, I cannot ha have a heavy system. At the same time, many of you do emphasize uh, independent systems. Uh, and only a small share of respondents, 25-24%, uh, wants uh, to go into either very deep verification system or uh, towards something very light. Now, um, ambassadors. You will hear about ambassadors several times. So what is the type uh, of ambassadors that uh, I would contribute uh, most? And many do mention scientists or uh, experts as uh, the type of ambassadors you would like to see. So um, over one third of uh, respondents, so you are interested to become ambassadors. You know, this is the place um, to raise, um, raise your uh, flag and uh, apply. So, and then of course, uh, we need to, to see how uh, one, could, uh, one could join uh, and so on. 
And finally, what is the expected support from the pact? Of course, this support can be through the capacity building. Um, I see the pact as a major networking opportunity or matchmaking where you would have philanthropies or other fundraisers who can join and put money on, on great ideas. Or it could, of course, promote and support existing initiatives where we can support uh, the dissemination of material or non-material support. And of course, very importantly, create a more favorable cultural or political environment. It is at the end, guys, about democracy. And this is from where, uh, from this soil, where uh, a proper education and proper progress uh, can, be, um, can be achieved. And of course, again, we are looking for examples and for details. So this is uh, my part of the, uh, of, of the uh, public consultation that I wanted really to share with you. And now over to you, uh, Kasha, to really introduce uh, all our participants to uh, what they have to look for to the breakout sessions. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, since we, um we have a minute or so. Uh, Christopher, our chat master, uh, would there be any burning questions that uh, we could answer now with Elena um, still here? Thank you, Kasia. Yeah, that's a very good question. So we have a few questions that you have already answered in the chat in terms of that we will share the presentations afterwards, including a, a contact list for the participants. So that will help uh, set up many of these chat groups afterwards in case you want to do that. In terms of a more pressing question, uh, Michael Dover posed one question about the geographical scope of the climate pact. So maybe that could be a good question for you to answer before we break for the breakout groups. Absolutely. Elena? We start in Europe and hopefully we will uh, succeed in Europe and then we are happy to uh, go global. <laughs> I love this answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, Christopher, is there anything else burning that we should answer now or there is... Mm, yes, oh, maybe, because I see that there are some people that are still trying to decide what group to go to. So maybe you can bring back the slide with the different groups mm -hmm. and uh, numbers, exactly, and then uh, people can take the last opportunity to, to change their name. Okay, that's super helpful. So let me just uh, quickly read again to you what uh, groups uh, available we have and if you want to end up being teleported in any of them you just need to put your number um, in front of your name so number one that will be charter of the pact so the values that uh, the pact is going to be based on as well as kind of joining instructions who can join and how so that we remain transparent and uh, but positive um, in what we do. Second one is the storyline. The storyline is about if you had 20 seconds to explain to your mother what it is that you're discussing here, this is your group. Uh, main messages, words to use, words not to use, should we be scaring people, should we not be scaring people, should we be about yes we can, this is your group. Number three is about climate pact ambassadors, who can be one and how and what for. Number four and five is about pledges, both individual and organization ones. Number six, knowledge sharing, including thematic webinars. We would love webinars like the one today to happen all over Europe, but not just run by us, but run by other people with the support that we will be able to provide. Number seven is about the support offered by the PACT. Why would you need the PACT? If you're already doing something, how can PACT help you? Uh, or how you can help each other, how we can help each other, because it's, it's the we, it's not you and them. Um, number eight, climate education. Uh, number nine, other potential actions. You go into that group and you convince other people that the topic you have brought into that group is the most important and this is what you're going to discuss there. So now is uh, the moment to really please put a number of your group in front of your name and I hand over to Ian who will tell us how it will happen and what are the rules. Ian, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cassie. So, so um, just to, to introduce you to the magic, uh, it has been mentioned a number of times that you need to put a number in front of your name and the number should correspond 
to the number uh, for the group that you want to be teleported to magically. And I just want to say uh, a few a few words about um, about how to be how to be a good participant. Because a good participant is is one who really focuses on on what matters and and listens uh, to to understand what other people are saying, uh, building on what they say and and trying to connect your own ideas. And and one that that's particularly dear to me. Try to think with people and their ideas before you think against them. So, so see what positive, uh, positive um, uh, outcomes you can build on, rather than, than than trying to immediately just wait to jump in and criticize. But, and first and foremost, do also have a lot of fun because that's the the um, most important part of this. You know, it should be enjoyable. So you will be uh, accompanied in your groups by facilitators. Uh, and these were a number of people who volunteered and who will be in, in every group. Uh, they will have a uh, so-called harvest sheet, uh, basically with, with some questions that, uh, that we'd like you to address. Uh, and they will be taking notes uh, of, uh, of what uh, comes out in the discussion. And I think it's important for everyone that the notes should reflect uh, what's actually the view of the group rather than just serve as a, as a possibility for, for the facilitator to put their own opinion. So, so do, keep, um, do keep that in mind when you, when you take notes. And I want to, to thank the facilitators once again uh, for taking on that role. Now the main, the main purpose of the breakouts is really to come out with, with concrete ideas and, and the mechanisms that will make this pact work. So, so the, the, the questions are, are designed for you to not give you know, great global ideas of how, how wonderful the pact is, but really specific ideas in, okay, how, what needs to happen? How is it gonna happen? What do we need to do? So, so that's, uh, that's in a nutshell uh, what, uh, what uh, we would like you to do in the groups. Now, in coming back from, from the groups, there won't be much time for each group to, to pr present all the outcomes. In fact, we may only have one or two from, from each of the topic areas, but, but please rest assured that absolutely everything that you contribute will be taken into account. It'll be brought together by, by your content team in DG Klima and they will analyze it and, and bring it together to see what, what are all of the concrete ideas that come out and report to it on it afterwards. So, so uh, it's, well, it's not scientific, yeah, you know, it's not, um, it's not a real science, but we will try to cluster as much as possible everything that comes out. And, and finally, when you report back, uh, and this is a tip to the facilitators, you know, bring out two, two really main ideas from, from your group. And, and perhaps a key question that you're all holding that, that may need further, further research uh, or further discussion. So that's, that's basically how it's gonna work. And, and uh, if, if you're all ready and holding on to your seats, uh, then, then our tech hosts will push the big button and then you will all disappear like magic. And we'll see you back in plenary in about 40 minutes. Uh, and hear what uh, what you've uh, experienced and and what are your great points to to share with the group. So have a lot of fun, enjoy your breakout, and I'll see you back here in in about 40 minutes. I think we need to give uh, a few more seconds to our technical host to assign everybody. But uh, indeed, the teleporting will happen. Uh, at some point, you will be automatically assigned. Uh, I hope uh, you will be enjoying your discussions. You will meet inspiring people. And uh, please, if there are any um, questions that uh, we should have answered and we haven't, uh, there is always in every harvesting sheet, um, there is always space for that. So don't hesitate to suggest that was what else uh, we should include in the next events and discussions. 
Uh, Will, Jess, uh, are we are we ready to go to the breakout rooms? Yes, I'll just send people now. Um, just a quick note: if anyone notices they're in the wrong group, please send us a message straight away, and we can we can move you very quickly. Just write, write a message, write a private message to the technical host. You can choose to whom you are sending the message in the chat. Uh, in the chat. Yes, exactly. uh, yes. Okay. Enjoy your discussions. See you in the plenary afterwards. To see what um, what I look like. Voila. So, so what we're going to do now is to, to bring back the, the facilitators, everybody's back. Uh, and, and like I said before, uh, we'll do one minute summary uh, with your two main ideas. And if you have a great question, uh, that as well. And, and we'll, really, we'll really have to be brutal about the, the one minute because we're, we're running a, a little bit late. Well, a little bit, about 15 minutes late. Uh, so, so do try to be concise, and and when I when you see me leaning forward really seriously like that, that means that your time has really come to an end, um, and we won't be able to hear from all the parallel groups. So, so if you have, um, you know, if you have a really great idea, then rush in, just raise your hand and say, "I'd like to speak," and uh, and we'll have to do just one or two per per topic. And then, uh, so, so who has the best idea? Hurry up. Uh, it's a completely Darwinian approach to collecting ideas. Mm -hmm. But of course, as I said, as I said initially, all the ideas will be connected and collected in the, in the great uh, outcomes document that, uh, that Klima will produce. If, so, if so I may just, uh, sorry, if I may just uh, pop in because maybe it's not clear in what way we are rushing in and volunteering <laughs> who has the best idea. So it's not who speaks the loudest, but uh, it's who first volunteers in the chat. So for every group, please, uh, whoever would like to summarize, please, then please write the number of your group, thematic group, and uh, that you would like to volunteer. Sorry to interrupt, Ian. There you go. So we already have two. So if we can, uh, maybe the chat host can keep track of whose turn it is. And then we can give the, the floor to the first group, uh, which is Chris Algren from group one. So you have one minute. Perfect. Thank you very much. So I was joined in my group with Pranav, Christina, Grisel, Lea and Elina and we were focusing on the charter of the pact. So uh, to very quickly summarize the discussions is that we think that the climate pact should really be open to everyone and that includes not only NGOs and citizens but also cities and companies. And we think that, I mean, because of that, there also needs to be rules of the game. And, and there needs to be a decision on in what way should we measure or, or implement the pact. So it cannot only be that um, it, you sign up to the pact and there, there's nothing linked to it, but there should be a specific commitment and some way of, of demonstrating that, that you are actually taking action. But the main foundational line is that it should be open to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that was exactly one minute. And do we have another group one who would like to add something? If you have exactly the same, no need no. to speak. But if you do... Not exactly the yes. same? Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so, okay. So, okay, so if I may very quickly, pretty much our group had endorsed what has been said. The, there is an understanding of a two levels of membership, if you wish, a private one, which should be open to everybody, and a corporation one, which had to be scrutinized. A main reason was to avoid greenwashing or marketing misuse. And it has to be done on a level of an impact, how to achieve the 2050 neutrality objectives. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm, and maybe the last one, I think what was missing from us, so it was similar to have um, uh, commitments and yeah. um, certain types of, uh, well, around principles on who can join. But I think um, in terms of the values that we found missing within the charter and within, or within the um, examples that were listed in the submission were um, 
equity and justice and accountability. Okay. Thank you very much. Now we, we have um, a, a, the next one in the chat is group eight. So we will take the group eights at this point. Um, so who, who would like to speak? Who is the first one? Aren't Jay? Hi, uh, it's Jada here, if I may speak. I'm from Group 8, so climate education. Our first uh, question was to discuss uh, what we felt was missing. And in our group, we discussed the fact that um, many people actually were not aware of the, exist uh, of the existing projects. So um, that would be nice maybe to have better, uh, you know, documentation or better reflection of what is already existing. And also we discussed that um, some projects actually could have more um, specific to subjects of, you know, of impact, like in schools, in public schools with uh, low-end regulations that are regional, and maybe also a national um, kind of um, direction because in some countries um, regions have absolutely uh, different powers and uh, what kind of projects could be worthwhile to include for us was um, to, to provide also some education to adults that are sometimes left out from the education they are um, not exactly aware of what uh, the pact is go is doing for them. I'm afraid um, your time is up. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have another group eight on climate education who would like to add to that? So don't uh, mind yeah. what's already been said, but add to that, please. Uh, if I may. Please. Um, all right. So uh, our two main uh, big points were one to make information uh, ubiquitous, so to integrate. Um, the climate discourse into as many discourses on as many levels as we can. So um, not just have this be uh, one specific niche topic, but um, uh, talk about it in schools, in town hall meetings, in all kinds of advocacy groups, sports organizations, anything. Um, not all the time, but everywhere. Um, then we also wanted to put stress on the European dimension. So which resources is Europe making available um, and how can people, individuals and, and um, uh, organizations, companies use them? Um, and in this context, we wanted to, um, or we, we suggested the development of toolboxes. So like small resource kits that are easy to access, easy to use that individuals can um, uh, make use of uh, personally and as organizations, and also that these toolboxes stress both which steps can be taken and how these steps can be taken in manageable proportions. Um, so that would be it from our group. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you very much. Now let's move on to the group threes. We have the, the, first, the first group three to, to come in was the ambassador's volunteer. All right. Rosanna? Yes, thank you. All right, we had a discussion about what we would like the ambassadors to be. Um, we had a couple of these that we, we a couple of ideas that we really liked, and one of them was that there should be thematic ambassadors because climate change is a huge problem and we all have our own passions and knowledges within this field. So uh, it, you could, for example, be a biodiversity ambassador or a clean energy ambassador. So there should be some possibility to find a focus field. Another idea and uh, discussion that we had, and I saw it was a question from another group three, is whether companies can be ambassadors. And we came to the conclusion, it should definitely be an opportunity for companies, but there should be a spokesperson. So a single person that is the spoke, the ambassador for the company. So this is an important thing, but it will be nice to have both companies and citizens because the citizens will actually know what sort of facts this company has joined, which will increase the trust and not think, oh, it's just greenwashing this label because they have the chance to be a part of it themselves. Lastly, we think the ambassador should be a, a function sort of bridge between ideas from the community and the resources available. So it will be nice if the ambassador has a role in a knowledge of what is possible and how to bring Thank that. Thank you very much. 
is, is there another group three that would like to, to report? Yes. Something that um, hasn't been mentioned? Yes, uh, indeed, there is one. Um, we had uh, a lot of, of that, what Rosanna already said, so to be the bridge between uh, the EU and um, organizations, um, politicians, industries. What we think um, is really, really important is three things. Um, passion to become an ambassador, not really a, a knowledge or a scientific background, but really passion. Resilience, because we, we will uh, face um, uh, barriers, of course, and we will really need resources and backup uh, from the EU to, to, um, yeah, to, to have knowledge, to, to, get, um, to get some information that we can share, or to know what kind of decision will be taken next week in the EU Commission or the, the Council or whatever. So the, these uh, three things we think will be really um, very, very important. That's it. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Now we'll move on to the group fours. And the first one was Pier Paolo. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. So we have two main ideas that I would like to uh, share here on this plenary session. One concerning the process of uh, committing to individual pledges. We as group number uh, four dealt with uh, individual pledges. And one was uh, one idea that we discussed was the possibility of having a a uh, fact base um, with scientific evidence, a sort of a checklist with all sort of individual contribution that a person can do and um, prioritized in terms of benefits that each individual pledge uh, can release uh, to the environmental cause. And uh, this sort of scientifically based checklist then can be tailored based on the geography of the individual. For instance, coastal area might have different environmental needs that metropolitan area rather than countryside areas. And so besides this uh, uh, scientifically based checklist tailored to different geographies, the other concept was how to motivate people to individually take actions. And one was the concept uh, that we discussed was the uh, possibility to use a user-friendly appealing applications that might embody the concept of a leaderboard. Uh, for instance, what you have while using Duolingo and the people who are particularly good at, at uh, embarking individual pledges then would have a higher score and, and so on. That's it. Thank you very much. Anyone else uh, of a group four? Yes, if, if, if I can, I would like to add to that. Um, <laughs> In general, we agreed with, with Peer's group. Uh, we call it the Universal Catalog of Actions. Uh, um, and um, we would like to process that more on a local level engagement way. Uh, so um, it, within the pact, design something like that and then roll it out very locally to the community so that actually fits within your um, uh, municipal way versus the countryside way of, of, of dealing with things. One of the things we saw as a, a possible problem is that we do not want biased data. Uh, and um, incentivizing doing stuff from this universal catalog might just bring uh, a biased data uh, uh, into the catalog. Um, Thank you very but, much. Yeah. Ah, thanks, Patrick. Great. So let's move on to the group sixes. Andreas? Okay, yeah, so the group six, um, we, we had as the first question, what topics would be interesting for you to share knowledge on during a webinar? So we were focusing very much on the question knowledge sharing using webinars as a technology as we do it today. And we can see that this works. Uh, of course, it has its pros and cons. What we agreed upon in a very interesting group with people working in the construction university area in waste fishery, um, being engaged to, to help people in poverty, insulation and policy making. <clears throat> we said webinars are tailored to deal with sector specific and, and really tailored topics and therefore a good tool to be used. We see that in Europe we have many different languages. Uh, also there with the webinar, it can be organized to the same topic but in different languages because what comes from the commission is very often translated, but mostly in the communication in English. Um, they are a chance to train the trainers. Uh, they, of course, besides the specific information, also 
a good tool to bring a big picture and some general information uh, to the people. Uh, there was the idea of organizing region-specific webinars. So, as I said before, language sector or the topic which is uh, important to a specific region, for example. We also think it's a great chance to present climate-related policies. So everything connected to the Green Deal, the climate law, for example, the Energy Efficiency Directive, what is the task uh, and the role of it, can be done and, and shared knowledge in a webinar. Then who are the people we risk to leave behind and how can we involve them? I think this was a very, uh, in particular, interesting thing to say, how can we join forces? And then climate action and economic benefits and aspects. I see you leaning forward, Ian. Very much so. Um, just to, to quickly say, what are your needs and what can you offer? We had at least three people in this seminar who are willing to offer these kind of webinars where they are having the know-how for. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Do we have another group six who wants to add anything? Yeah, yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so the main topics that were repeatedly coming up in our group were energy, uh, in terms of energy efficiency, renewable energy, and also circular economy uh, as uh, one of the pillars of, of Green Deal. And I think what was often mentioned was the need for define, define the objective, define the target group, and based on that, define the way how to, how to communicate. Because the knowledge and the expertise is not actually the issue, but problem is how to, how to uh, integrate or interact with, with the wider public that may not be uh, educated in, in the specific area. So that was probably the, the most uh, mentioned need for, uh, for the webinars. Thank you very much. And now we'll move on to, to our next set, which is uh, group number seven, Agatha. Can I add one more group six? Sorry. If, if it's really fast and it is. It's original. <laughs> um, yeah, we felt there would be an overarching need for a common format for webinars, like branding, um, dissemination support, and some kind of marketing around the Climate Pact so that they fit well within the... the um, the, the, the whole idea. And outside of webinars, it would be useful to have other formats like platforms and places to share resources and websites as well. Great. Thank you so much. Agatha, group seven. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. So in group seven, we talked about support that can be offered by the by the PACT, be it financial support and any other support. And I just want to bring in here uh, kind of two main key things that we talked about. So the first thing would be that um, in the context of discussing this kind of multi-stakeholder matchmaking platform, we felt like it was really necessary, especially at the local level. A local level really was very much emphasized in our conversations. And to uh, make sure that that platform is the most effective, uh, the idea would be to really connect, but also to allow those actors that do not normally have access to funds to connect with those who might have these funds. And then another thing was on how to distribute the, the, the funds once they are available. And we talked a lot about um, the role that uh, the kind of youth networks can have and where it could really be kind of an exchange with, with mutual benefits where youth networks can provide the money to local grassroots initiatives and um, and young people can also become the, the kind of local change makers in their in their own communities. And in that sense, I know I'm finishing, I, I'm almost at the minute. Um, in that sense, um, there's also this idea to provide these really little grants, like like 10 or, or 20, uh, 20,000 for the organizations for a year to, to, to really implement activities. And if they are very successful and they, they do deliver um, results, then they can be offered more money, but really to check, uh, check with them uh, to, to make sure that they are kind of effective in, with these uh, these smaller grants. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else uh, on a group seven? Yes, please. Go on. Uh, I agree with the small grants, but in order to do to deploy small grants effectively, you have to have a presence on the ground of people who know who can make a judgment about whether the grants are justified. We suggested that leader groups and community-led local development groups in towns could be the right mechanism. They are a presence of the European Union capable of deploying small grants. We also suggested that the Climate Pact Unit should have a database of uh, climate-related initiatives and be able to act as a 
partnership bureau, putting people in touch with each other if they wish to exchange ideas across the nations and across the regions. Great, thank you so much. We'll move on to the group fives. And, um, uh, sorry, also uh, the, another group seven, if I could just if, say really if quickly. It's, if it's really original and you're really fast, go on. It is. So what, what we had uh, initially talked about is having a grid and communication between all the different uh, local groups, whether they are uh, government organizations that are local that want to put in some um, grid, or whether they are uh, organizations or movements who want to put certain um, projects in place. So a grid where people can go to talk to each other about projects that they had worked on, as well as partner up in solidarity. And using this grid that you could decide um, which groups to fund and would have an easier time knowing whether a group is justified or not because they would have to make it onto this um, grid as well as in as well as inviting um, incentives for people to behave in a green manner the same way that we have incentives to deduct uh, gas mileage from our taxes in some cases. Thank you. We will we will take the detail out of that from from your written harvest and uh, preserve this great idea for everyone. So, can I invite Carla from the group fives to uh, to start? Yes, we we talked about what exactly is an organization, and in the end, we decided that everyone is included. Every organization, being it government, non-government, public, private, business, Boy Scouts, everything is in. The other thing we discussed is that each organization has to have a different type of pledge. So every pledge should be tailored to the type of organization, to the type of commitment everyone is capable of pledging. Uh, and everything has to be transparent. That is another thing that we all agreed on uh, in our group. Uh, in our discussions to avoid uh, greenwashing. Uh, we have a question. We don't know exactly if the final target of the pledges is zero emissions or is it beyond that? That is a question that I have to put to for forward. That is our question and we want to meet again, all our group. Uh, we, we didn't cover everything that we were supposed to cover. So we kind of think that we have to jump in again and, and we want to continue what we started here. Thank you. Great, great spirit. Do we have another uh, representative of a group five who would like to speak? Yeah, I'll go. Um, so we had quite a lot of the same discussions that Carla was saying, but also talking about bringing all stakeholders together. So suppliers through the organizations and also uh, customers. So really the, the full circular economy um, so that you're, you're hearing all the ideas and you're really sharing. We saw like a need for this demonstration of commitment, like Carla was saying, and all different businesses um, to be giving achievable options. But we do see the need, like the individual said, to set up some st standard pledges, which can be made and give people ideas as to how to actually, you know, what are the options, what can they do? Um, and allow the organizations to actually go and implement. But they do need some kind of um, audit, as you might say, but I guess that depends on, uh, on how it's set up. Thank Brilliant. you. Thank you so much. So we'll move on to, to the group nines. Tomas, would you like to start? Uh, okay, uh, so I have a really tiny group, just three people. <clears throat> And the only idea which came out was the query and answer web page when anyone can ask a question regarding PACT and general uh, New Deal. Uh, one can ask questions and expert answer. This is the idea of the website. And the list of answers might create a database which should be easily searchable. <coughs> So some, some sort of FIQ, yes, a list of, of questions. Uh, and then we have some discussion how to organize this, uh, how to find the really good experts, 
And uh, uh, the basic of the idea is that when one search through the uh, Green Deal web pages, which are currently available, official one, it's very complicated. It spreads out into hundreds of different sub pages and it's very difficult to find s fast answers. So this is the, uh, the idea <coughs> which we would like uh, developed. And out of these three people, which were in my group, all of them, uh, said that they are ready to help to establish such a system in their areas of expertise uh, and maybe as a volunteers just sorting out questions and, and helping organize on the system. That's it. Thank you. Was there another group nine or were you the only one? Yes. 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 Uh, so thank you, Tomasz. Uh, it is a very good idea. And I think there is some communications problem we can between the green grass uh, and uh, the leaders uh, and uh, in form of questions uh, they could uh, the leaders could uh, answer and perhaps uh, improve understanding and uh, also mm, yes exactly and experts not the leaders sitting and talking with us but experts and these people who uh, build the policy because there are questions so uh, and uh, I it also people of marginalized people has to be included and uh, there is a power among uh, young youth organization who have uh, own way to uh, convince uh, European leaders. Also interdisciplinary conferences uh, will be um, organized in Berlin uh, next year uh, between to, to join together objectives and financial uh, financial responsibility for development. Mm. Thank you very much. Yes. Finally, we have our last set, the group yes. twos. Yes. So, yes. Celine, there, there, there is one question. There's uh, one more answered. group nine. Yes, nine graph. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's one more group nine. Uh, yes, yeah, that's okay. We we will take two. The oh. question which should be answered is this one. If it's a question, please put it in the chat. Because no, we no. need to move on. No, no, it's, a, it's an issue about the pack. If we are to respect our international commitments, then fossil energy emissions are a scarce commodity. How can a scarce commodity be distributed equitably? Thank you. Thank you. This please question, question is not answered the, by the Commission. Right. Yes. Please put that question in the chat so we can be sure to have it exactly and to reply to it completely. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's, it's a very valid question and it's one that we should preserve. But Timmermans never completely answered. Timmermans never answers. To no, this but this, this is not a debating forum, this is a reporting forum. So I'd like to hear from Celine and uh, Group 2, please. Hi, hello everyone. Um, so within our group, we in, uh, so our group two was about um, storyline of the pack and drafting session. So obviously 40 minutes to draft is very hard, but we got a couple of very, oh, sorry. Is this something is happening right now? Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Just, just uh, go on and, and okay. tell us, tell us what you found. Okay. Ah, a drawing. Yes, yes, it's, it's a little bit early, but uh, Celine, please continue, don't mind. Okay, so within, uh, within the overall communication, we believe that there should be different messages that speak to different category of people, which tap into different elements, which can speak to them and resonate with them in a way that gets them involved. And one of those, the, one of the elements that get people um, involved, we talk about, uh, for example, like this, the current social and economic situation, uh, memories, because um, one of the uh, um, one of the, the member of the team, Frank, uh, spoke about the reason why he decided to to fight against climate change was about the memories that he used to have in the 60s and, and also 
And as you can see, we believe that communication should be also visual, that it's uh, very, very important. Um, so I think that's about it. I hope I resume quite well. If not, um, my team, uh, Antonia, Frank, Alia, Loic. We, we also have your harvesting sheet. Uh, please send it to us. Uh, and uh, from what I understand, what we see now on the screen is what uh, Claudio, our visual harvester, who was listening to one of the storyline uh, uh, thematic groups uh, has drafted. So this is how we imagine, how we, show, how we can visually see what the pact is about. I think it's, it's very inspirational. Thank you, Claudia, Thank you. for sharing this. Is there another group too that would like to add something? Um, yeah, we are another group too. I'm Franco, I just want to share our battle cry uh, which is uh, a waterfall is made of a million of droplets, especially if they are consumers. So it's about empowerment of the citizen and of the consumers to make it that is something that we are in together and to show the citizens that they have power, especially with their wallets. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So that brings to a close the, the outcomes from the breakout sessions. And, and I'd like to, to ask you, Sylvia, what are you going to do with all of this? all of these uh, outcomes that you get from all the groups? Well, we are taking this very seriously, that's for sure. Uh, there are two main steps that I can uh, present unless uh, Elena, uh, our head of unit, would like to take over uh, the floor. But if I don't hear, then I can absolutely uh, summarize that, um, well, Right now, we are uh, indeed preparing the official uh, document of the, of the Commission, uh, which is called Communication um, of the Climate Pact. And uh, there is a part of the storyline, uh, how we are presenting the pact uh, to the world. And what you have come up with today, not only in the group two, but in all of the groups will become uh, we will definitely take it into consideration when, when drafting. Uh, we will have a little bit more time than 40 minutes. Uh, so we will definitely take your ideas, um, collect all the harvest, ha harvesting sheets. Please, facilitators, send it to us so that we don't miss uh, any word. And uh, we will be drafting this communication, taking into consideration what you have come up with. So you really had a chance to co-design the future um, docu official documents uh, of the of the uh, commission. I think it's quite unique in the European scale. Then uh, in November we are planning um, to uh, uh, to organize a launch event that will actually introduce officially that the pact is starting. The pact has taken over. Uh, we are planning to communicate with you even before, uh, but. On this, the details will come at the end of the webinar in something like 15 minutes, uh, so uh, stay tuned. Um, then, so, um, we also need to answer some questions um, that were posted. Let's answer the questions. I was, I was thinking, uh, what, is it better to first uh, answer the questions, or do we first share uh, what 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 was captured during the discussions, Kasia? Yeah, um, I think uh, Q and A, and then graphic harvest, and then a checkout. Okay. Elena, you got some questions, I think, from us and um, from from the people, and also if you would like to just very briefly react to what you have heard. How you how are you finding this? Yes, Kasia, maybe I can uh, read up the questions that people have raised in, in the chat. I mean, the first one was, what is the timeline for the Climate Pact, which Sylvia has a little bit already mentioned. Uh, another question that came up is, what is the overlap with the implementation of the Green Deal and the next generation uh, EU plans for the Climate Pact? And the third question, how does the EU Climate Pact envision to link to existing initiatives such as the Covenant of Mayors? And the fourth question on where the people should send their harvesting sheets. So maybe I'll, I'll let you, Sylvia, respond to the harvesting sheets and then uh, we give the two other questions to Elena. Of course. Uh, please, facilitators, send the harvesting sheets to our functional mailbox so you can just respond to the message in which you received 
the uh, harvesting ships. Okay, just uh, just click respond uh, to us, um, and this is the easiest way. Uh, I, my chat is is blocked, but we can also if somebody can also paste uh, our email address functional mailbox to the chat and that also can be used for that, for contacting us. And now for the next questions. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Super. So um, first of all, this is one of these typical questions we get always, what are the overlaps? And it's always asked with this uh, drop of concern and worry that there will be some sort of, uh, let's say, fight on conflict. Uh, let me be very clear. Uh, I think Climate Pact is unique uh, in the sense of uh, bringing policies home to people and bringing, uh, you know, people's worries back uh, to Brussels. And uh, in, in that sense, uh, it is really important, for instance, uh, for the implementation of Green Deal, uh, where you have number of strategies, number of, uh, let's say, very clear targets, uh, but without a commitment and without concrete action, many of these strategies will remain paper tigers. So uh, I think uh, the, the, the Climate Pact will remain a companion of any policy on, on environment if we are uh, able to multiply good actions uh, and, and bring uh, grassroots movements into a continuous life so that they don't just uh, race uh, once and, and then just die. So that's, that, that's really important uh, to, 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 to have in mind. Now, a uh, very important question is that in the next few years, member states will have major access to a lot of finance. Now, this money can be used fruitfully or it can be a waste of money on what I would call a brown growth. So what is necessary is now to democratize, if you wish, the talk on climate action and make sure that politicians see that they voters and people have a list of activities that are actionable, uh, that can be funded, and uh, this is where actually people uh, could uh, make sure that the green uh, and digital transition that will be financed by the uh, what is called the next generation uh, facility uh, will, will be really green or uh, really digital. So uh, we have seen uh, Polish elections. I don't want to make any more comments, but what we have realized uh, with uh, my colleagues in the team is that unless you break the vicious circle of, uh, you know, transferring education of the past generation to the new generation in the bad sense, through a new progressive uh, talk about climate action, you will end up always in the so same entrenched uh, positions and this will not change. In many countries, uh, you have a clear divide between the urban and the rural, uh, between the, the youth and, and the older. And what we want to have out of the pact is an intergenerational uh, dialogue that will, you know, close these sort of divides because we can learn from each other and in the villages and in the cities, you can also have uh, action for, uh, for, for climate. So important to tap into this money. This is the moment where we need to spread the, the knowledge of what can be usefully done as an investment. And then of course, when the money comes, uh, the, the, the activities or actionable uh, priorities will be already there. A uh, covenant of mayors, very important. We know that cities will be part of, of this uh, climate pact. So covenant is, is, a, is an ally. But let me uh, say very, uh, you know, honestly, uh, we will have a much lighter monitoring or verification or reporting system for, for the climate pact because what is important for us at this you know, point in time is really to create this sort of waves of action. Uh, so that it, it spreads uh, across Europe, uh, you know, from cities to uh, other populations uh, and communities. Over. 
Okay, fantastic. So thank you very much, uh, Elena, for answering uh, only a few of the questions. Uh, we are taking a good note of the remaining ones. Um, so don't worry about this. Uh, now, the big moment has come. Let's take a look uh, at what our graphical harvester has prepared. He was Claudio was listening to the whole meeting, to the two hours of uh, very fruitful discussions. Uh, Claudio, if you can share your screen and uh, maybe tell us a story, comment on what you have observed today during the during the discussions. Yes, can you hear me first? Yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm exporting my work into an image and I will try to share it into the platform with all of you. I share my screen. Uh, I, will, I will just say the pace was not uh, quite. It was very, very fast. And it was challenging to, where's my image? The here. best of discussions, you mean? No, of the plenary. Ah. <laughs> I know, Jan, one <laughs> minute no to say three, five uh, points is quite impossible for the... the oui. Can you see my screen or not? Not yet, not yet. Oh, what's happening in my Zoom? Zoom is saying I'm uh, sharing my screen. I will start again. Uh, start broadcast. Screen. Can I say that uh, we are very lucky with, with Claudio helping us uh, also to, to assist in the in the webinar. He's also a volunteer just from inside the commission, <laughs> but he works in a completely different directorate. Uh, just decided to to listen to our discussion uh, because okay. he support us. Apparently, my Zoom session doesn't accept anymore to share my screen. Uh, Will, can you? Can you maybe uh, double check that Claudio's iPad is still uh, as a co-host? Otherwise, yeah, maybe we can, uh, Silvia, say, because people uh, are starting to leave us in this world over time, uh, the important thing is that we will share uh, the contacts. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay, okay. Uh, Claudio, while, while you are uh, trying to solve, maybe you can send us the link as well. And in the meantime, I will just say, that, um, well, we, we are seeing that uh, the need for discussion and the, uh, the level of enthusiasm to get engaged in the pact is high and this is absolutely heartwarming and giving us even more energy to work on the pact. So thank you very much for this. We also don't want to leave you like that. We want to stay in touch and that's why um, we would like to collect uh, after all these discussions of what we potentially could do, we would like to ask you what in practice you would be the most willing to do? How to how would you like to get involved in the pact? And then uh, we will uh, we will con we will will if you can send the link um, to the to the EU survey that uh, that we we are asking you to to fill in. Um, so two messages. First of all, we want you to get in touch with each other. We will uh, together with a summary of uh, of this webinar. We will send a table with all the contacts, with all the emails. Uh, so feel free to filter people with whom you were, uh, you, you discussed your, in the breakout room discussion or anybody else who you would like to get in touch with. Um, some people mentioned that a group in social media could be useful. I absolutely support this idea, uh, but please take over because we, we have no idea how you would like to discuss. Maybe it will be thematic, maybe it will be national, maybe it will be for everybody. P please feel free to use this contact details. Everybody uh, in this database agreed to share uh, the emails uh, in the, during the registration. So feel free to use the emails to contact people uh, interested in uh, similar topics as you as you are. So this is the first step. We will send you the contact details to all the participants of the webinar today. Feel free to take over, be getting active. You can even invite us to some of the events that you will organize or some initiatives. 
Uh, we are currently three people in the climate pack team, so you can imagine we cannot organize everything. <laughs> um, but um, absolutely, if uh, there is an initiative that uh, we could help, we could support, we can already start doing this now, even before the official launch of the climate pact. Okay, so this is first that we will send you this uh, table of contact so that you can continue the discussions and maybe start collaborating with each other. Uh, second, um, what I was, what I started saying in the beginning, will if you can send this um, this uh, link to EU survey, we would like to also get in touch uh, with you on particular topics. So if you if you feel that. For example, you, would, you are considering very seriously to become an EU Climate Pact Ambassador. Please leave us your contact. Uh, thank you very much for sharing this. It's a, it's a very simple form. It's just that uh, before November, there is a lot of time. And we will be already, before the official launch of the pact, we will already be starting to form and um, uh, creating some maybe in, uh, initiatives and getting to know some details. Uh, regarding particular activities. If you would like to get to know them earlier, if you would like to get to uh, keep in touch with us on particular uh, activities and initiatives, please tell us that you are interested in this, in this form. And so in this way, we know that we, uh, if we are supposed to, for example, contact the first uh, Climate Pact Ambassadors, we should contact you. So please, uh, feel free to fill it in. It will be open uh, at least, I think, a few days after the webinar. So if you have time to do it now, that would be best. If, if not uh, for a few days, I think that we can say until the end of the week, uh, it, it will remain open. So feel free to contribute. Um, and yes, uh, I think I will leave the last words uh, to Elena. The last words are very simple. Uh, let's continue uh, like this together. Please become um, our multipliers. Talk about uh, what you have heard today. Uh, reach out uh, to uh, others. And a big, big, big thank you and a big, big, big applause to all of you for what you have done. Thank you very much for for all the contributions, ideas, and thank you to facilitators for helping us manage. Really, it's it's a hell of a job. So, thank you. <laughs> okay, enjoy your evening. Best of luck in all the initiatives, and let's keep in touch. Many thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Yes. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. This is very helpful. Bye. 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 B